you're about to enter a realm where darkness shrouds the skies and aviation terms can have multiple definitions. Step into the twilight zone of FAA regulations as we peel back the layers of darkness and explore the FAA's elusive definitions of night. In order to make sure we can log time, carry passengers, and safely operate outside of daylight hours, there are several definitions you need to know. Let's start with the least complicated. 14 CFR 91.209 states that no one can operate an aircraft without lighted position lights from sunset to sunrise. The FAA does not specify a specific source for sunrise or sunset times, so you can use the official sunrise and sunset times from sources including the NOAA, weather.com, timeanddate.com, and many others. I use the sunrise and sunset times in ForeFlight. Uh, let's look at an example. If I am at KAAO, or Colonel James Jabara Airport in Wichita, Kansas on July 28th, I can look at the ForeFlight airport information and see that I must have my position lights on from 8.41 p.m. until 6.29 a.m. Does that make sense? 14 CFR 91.209 also contains a special nighttime definition, but it's a little more complicated, so we'll look at that in a minute. The second definition builds on the first. In order to carry passengers at night, 14 CFR 61.57 Bravo specifies that within the preceding 90 days, you have to have done three takeoffs and three landings to a full stop within the period beginning one hour after sunset and ending one hour before sunrise. Again, you can use any official source for sunrise sunset times, then add one hour to the sunset and subtract one hour from the sunrise. For this example, we'll stick with KAAO in Wichita, Kansas, and we'll also stick with July 28th so that we can compare the results. Looking at ForeFlight, we see that the sunset is at 8.41 p.m. and sunrise is at 6.29 a.m. Adding an hour to sunset and subtracting an hour from sunrise indicates that we'll need to do our takeoffs and landings between 9.41 p.m. and 5.29 a.m. Still making sense? <laughs> Third definition, in order to count flight time towards a private pilot or commercial pilot certificate, you need to use the definition of night specified in 14 CFR 1.1. This regulation states night means the time between the end of evening civil twilight and the beginning of morning civil twilight as published in the Air Almanac converted to local time. There are a couple of important factors to note here. First, in this definition, the FAA identifies a very specific source. The Air Almanac is published annually by the U.S. Naval Observatory. I've included the link to download the Almanac in the description below. However, you can also get the same data in a less technical format from the Naval Observatory, and I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Second, the FAA has thrown another term at us, civil twilight. <laughs> what the heck is civil twilight? Fortunately, the Naval Observatory website defines civil twilight as the period beginning in the morning and ending in the evening when the center of the sun is geometrically six degrees below the horizon. The bottom line here is that we aren't going to be able to just look at the sky and tell when this definition of night starts and ends. We'll have to use the U.S. Naval Observatory's data. So let's do that. Let's go back to Wichita, Kansas. Like before, we're at KAAO, and we're going to be doing our night cross-country. What's the earliest we can leave? We'll start by bringing up the Naval Observatory page for computing the complete sun and moon data for one day. Again, I've put a link to this page in the description below. This page presents all of the sun and moon data for a full day without needing to interpolate or correct for daylight savings time as you would with the almanac. Once we are at the page, we'll first make sure the date is correct. Then, let's enter our location information, Wichita, Kansas. And now, we'll tell the page to correct for daylight savings time and click Get Data. The results indicate that morning civil twilight, corrected for daylight savings time, starts at 6 a.m. and evening civil twilight ends at 21.11. So, to be legal, we'll need to fly between 9.11 p.m. and 6 a.m. local time. Does that make sense? So we've explored three different definitions of night, and each one has a different duration. In Wichita, we need to have our position lights on from 8.41 p.m. until 6.29 a.m. We can log private, pilot, or commercial experience from 9.11 p.m. until 6 a.m., and we need to do our night currency landings between 9.41 p.m. and 5.29 a.m. So, what is this fourth definition of night I've been hinting at? Well. It's the definition of when position lights should be used in Alaska. 
The reason for the additional definition is because, well, depending on where you are in Alaska and what time of year it is, there may not be a sunrise or a sunset. With that in mind, 14 CFR 91.209 notes that in Alaska, position lights must be used during the period when a prominent unlighted object cannot be seen from a distance of three statute miles or when the sun is more than six degrees below the horizon. So there you go. Three definitions you need to know to log time, carry passengers, and safely operate outside of daylight hours in the lower 48 in Hawaii. And a fourth definition you'll need to know if you're flying in Alaska. If you like this video and would like to support this channel, please consider a donation through Buy Me A Coffee. The link is in the description below and any support is greatly appreciated. Also, please comment, hit the thumbs up, and consider subscribing. Finally, if you're looking for more flight training information, I'd recommend watching this video next. <laughs> As always, thank you for watching, fly safely, and I will see you next time. <laughs>